Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sukanth Das here. Today is 7th of April and today is celebrated as World Health Day. It's an irony that on this day, the health of entire world is under challenging times. We are going through unprecedented times, times that the health of world has never witnessed before. We are battling coronavirus or COVID-19, the disease that is caused by coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2 virus. We don't have a cure for it. We don't have a vaccine for it. So all that we know, all that we can do is try and break the chain of transmission. And that is by social distancing, by locking ourselves down inside our homes and strictly implementing these measures. We also come across, uh, being a doctor, I also come across certain queries from time to time, which are very important for us to address, for us to understand while taking preventive steps. One of the important things that we must understand when the question comes to us before us, is the virus airborne? Now there is no conclusive evidence to this. Most of the experts would disagree and they would say that the virus is not airborne. Some would say that it might be airborne. It would take months to exactly come to an answer. But for practical purposes, we must remember that the virus does get transmitted through air in the form of droplets, even in the form of micro droplets. Everyone understands that in the form of sneezing or coughing, the virus gets transmitted. But the virus can also get transmitted when people are talking to each other during a normal conversation, during normal exhalation. So that is something we have to keep in mind. That is why we have to, for practical purposes, understand that the virus can get transmitted through air. That is why we have to maintain a distance of at least six feet in between two people. That is what is being advocated by all of us. Whether we use the word airborne or not, it's a different matter. For common man, for common people, it has to be kept in mind that air is the medium through which the virus can get transmitted from one person to another in the form of droplets. Another important point of transmission of mode of transmission of the virus is through fomites. So when the droplets get deposited on, on door handles, on surfaces, on objects, on mobile phones, on pens, or other objects that the infected person uses and a healthy person accidentally touches those objects and from then they touches, uh, we frequently touch our mouth, nose and eyes. So that is how this fomite transmission can also happen. That's why they always advise you to frequently uh, wash your hands. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you do not have a sanitizer. If you have a soap, if you have a normal hand wash, you must keep washing your hands several times in a day, at least 20 to 30 seconds. Complete thorough hand wash. That is very, very important. Coming to the second point of my discussion is that use of masks the cdc has advocated that all people should wear masks you don't need to have a n95 mask or a surgical mask spare those masks for healthcare workers for doctors because they are struggling to get those masks for common people all we can do is we can use a homemade mask we can use a cloth or a fabric mask or even a scarf or something to cover our mouth that will protect us in two basic ways one a asymptomatic individual will not transmit the infection to others and of course a normal person will get protected from those droplets getting directly into his ear nose or into his nose mouth or eyes <clears throat> so we must be mindful of using a mask whether it's a homemade mask or it's a scarf or a piece of cloth whatever it is whenever we go out the third and most important thing for all of us is to remember from a childhood we have heard the phrase health is wealth today's world health day never before in the history of mankind would this phrase apply more appropriately than today when the wealth of the entire nation entire world is going through difficult times because health is undergoing challenging times so the world has come to understand that if a healthy world means a wealthy world. So it's our collective responsibility that we must follow the guidelines as long as the governments, as long as the administration wants us to keep ourselves locked down, we must keep ourselves locked down. For people like me, for healthcare workers, and also millions of people out there, 
at least if not millions, thousands of people out there, healthcare workers, nurses, other technical staff, and also people uh, from other departments, the policemen, the housekeeping staff, the people in the administration who are engaged to look after ordinary people. Please respect the work they are doing. And one of the most important things, please respect healthcare workers. Don't assault, don't get violent, don't insert healthcare workers, don't insult doctors. They are putting their lives at risk to save you. By following their advice, you make their task easier. This is a virus which knows no boundaries, which spares no one. How I'm behaving is going to affect you, how you're behaving is going to affect me, to affect the entire world. That's why we all have to behave in a collective and responsible manner. That's the only way we can break the chain of transmission and come to a state we can comfortably say that we have evaded this risk and the day will not be far when we'll be reaching a stage when the world will win over this virus. Thank you.